بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate. Praise be to Allah, the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, his pure family, his noble companions, and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of reckoning. Dear viewers, hello and welcome to your weekly program, Understanding Islam. Today we are discussing the life of a great messenger from Allah Almighty, Yunus or Jonah, peace be upon him. One of the outstanding messengers with a very interesting story that contains many important and practical lessons for us in our daily lives. Allah Almighty mentioned the prophethood of Yunus, peace be upon him, and the revelation that he received from God Almighty. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Indeed, we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, as we revealed to Nuh and the prophets after him, and we revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave a Zabur, that is a book of Psalms, Surah An-Nisa. Yunus be upon him is named Jonah, or Jonas in English, and Yuna in Hebrew, and in Greek and Latin as Yunas. Yunus be upon him is the son of Metta, and he is also known as the Nun, which means the one of the whale, because of his amazing story with the whale. Yunus, peace be upon him, is from the descendants of Ibrahim, peace be upon him. He was a righteous person and a great messenger of Allah Almighty, mentioned in the Holy Quran with high regards and honor, along with many other great messengers, peace be upon them all. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, and we gave revelation to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of them we guided. And Noah, we guided before. And among his descendants, David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron. Thus do we reward the doers of good. And Zechariah and John and Jesus and Elias. And all were of the righteous. And Ishmael and Elisha and Jonah and Lot. And all of them we preferred over the worlds and some among their fathers and their descendants and their brothers. And we chose them and we guided them to a straight path. Surah Al-An'am. There is one chapter in the Holy Quran named after the Prophet Yunus, peace be upon him, which is the 10th Surah. And three more places in the Holy Quran mention some details. But in general, the story of Yunus, peace be upon him, in the Holy Quran is short and concise with few repetitions and glimpses from different parts of the story at different times and circumstances. In his relationship with his people, their denial and rejection, and in his own struggle, escape, trial, and repentance. Yunus, peace be upon him, was sent to the people of Nineveh, situated in the north of nowadays Iraq, near the city of al Mosul. Nineveh is said to be the first city on earth linked with the many early prophets and messengers, peace be upon them. It was the largest city in the world at that time, with more than 100,000 inhabitants, with a well-organized society. Now that huge number of citizens and organized society at that time hint at the extent of their outstanding achievements and their advanced management skills. The people of Nineveh enjoyed the many blessings of life and they made use of the abundant natural resources around them to create a flourishing civilization. In the beginning, they were monotheists, worshiping Allah Almighty, following the teaching of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, that he spread before in that area. However, slowly they shifted from the right path and started making status and idols of their prophets and righteous people to remind them of their God and religion. But with the passage of time, they forgot about that, and later generations started worshipping these idols themselves. This way, the people of Nineveh became idolaters and lived a life of sin and material gains and never thought about the hereafter. That is when the Prophet Yunus, peace be upon him, was sent to them to educate them and guide them to the right path and to the worship of Allah Almighty alone. However, the people of Nineveh were blinded by their material world and despite all the efforts of Yunus peace be upon him, it is said that only two people believed in him, an ethnic knowledgeable man and a wise philosopher. The rest of the people denied him and insisted on their wrong ways. Yunus peace be upon him felt very sad for them and upset with their carelessness. And after some times, 
the women's peace people upon him got fed up with their disbelief and stubbornness. And they also got fed up with his call and repeated advice and interference in their practices. He warned them that if they will continue their disbelief, a punishment will fall upon them. They ignored the warning, and in a state of repentance, they challenged him to bring the punishment on. It is said that a revelation came to Yunus, peace be upon him, informing him that a punishment was coming their way. And thus, he probably thought that his message was over, and soon God Almighty will punish them. Because of all that, Yunus, peace be upon him, thought there was no hope in these people, and they will never believe. And he was very angry with them, and he decided to leave them to their demise and go far away from there, which seems the best thing to do at that time. However, it seems that he took that decision from his own without waiting for the orders of Allah Almighty. Now, this moment is described actually in the Holy Quran in brief, as Allah Almighty says, and mention the man of the whale, when he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon him, Surah Al-Anbiya. So Yunus, peace be upon him, left his people and thought that God Almighty will not decree anything on him. Or probably he thought that God Almighty will not hold him to a strict accountability. Or probably he thought that God Almighty will not confine his message to these people alone, but send him to another people. Now the verse in the Holy Quran accommodates all these and other meanings. After Yunus, peace be upon him, left the city, something extraordinary was about to happen to his people for the first and only time in history, as we will see after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. When the people of Nineveh saw Yunus, peace be upon him, leave, they got scared. And their wise men warned their people, saying, you know that no prophet leaves his people except that punishment follows. And sooner than later, a suspicious dark cloud blocked the horizon. And they feared that this was the punishment that Yunus, peace be upon him, warned them about. As they knew, Yunus, peace be upon him, never told a lie in his whole life among them. They started thinking wisely and counseling between themselves as what to do, if there is still a chance. Surprisingly, they decided that the best thing to do is to repent and believe and hope that it's not too late. They regret their sins and mistakes, their harsh treatments of Yunus, peace be upon him. They cried and prayed to God Almighty to forgive them. It was a momentous hour filled with sincere repentance to Allah Almighty. Not only that, they actually took practical steps to correct their ways. They started fixing any injustice among them, returning the rights of people. And thus, Allah Almighty, the Most Merciful, forgave them and removed the punishment that was about to strike them. And when the threat was over, they prayed to Allah Almighty to return Yunus, peace be upon him, to them, to guide them. This was a first in history, as there was no city of people or people before that uh, believed at the very last moment, which proves the mercy of Allah Almighty and his love for forgiveness. This incident also proves the importance of counseling and thinking and deciding wisely and returning to the truth and right path, despite what was done in the past. Allah Almighty mentioned the example of this outstanding city and its desire to take heed and change and practically correct its mistakes. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, then has there not been a single city that believed so its faith benefited except the people of Jonah? When they believed, we removed from them the punishment of disgrace in worldly life and we gave them enjoyment for a time. Surah Yunus. This is a very important lesson from Allah Almighty to all of us. Never lose hope in people, even bad people. This is especially important for parents, preachers, teachers, educators, and everyone dealing with teaching and guidance. Do not give up or lose hope but continue trying with sincerity and patience, as Allah Almighty ordered the Messenger, peace be upon him, to be patient and warned him from giving up on people. We should try our best to advise and remind them wisely and softly, and if Allah wills, he will guide them to the truth and forgive their sins and bless them. So the city of Nineveh was saved and pardoned, and was engulfed with the mercy and bless from Allah Almighty enjoying life and abundant good. 
as for Yunus, peace be upon him, his life was taking a drastic turn. After he angrily left his people, he went far away till he reached a coastline where he boarded a ship along with other passengers and cargo. At night, the weather changed and a stormy wind came and the waves surrounded them and came upon the ship from everywhere. The ship was too heavy and they had to lighten the weight or else they assumed that they will be doomed. They threw their cargo, but it was still not enough. And they decided to draw lots to choose a person to throw. Yunus, peace be upon him, was chosen by the lots. They didn't like that as they saw him a good and righteous person and an honorable man. So they drew lots a second time and it was Yunus, peace be upon him again. He got ready to jump, but they stopped him and decided to try one more time. The third time was no different, for Allah Almighty wanted something from this. The trials and tribulation of Yunus, peace be upon him, was about to begin. In the middle of a dark and moonless night, Yunus, peace be upon him, mentioned the name of Allah Almighty and jumped in the raging sea and disappeared beneath the, wave, the huge waves. Allah Almighty ordered a whale to gobble Yunus, peace be upon him, and avoid harming him. It is not clear if the whale actually swallowed him into its stomach or just inside its mouth because the Holy Quran avoids the verb swallow and instead uses a specific verb that can be translated as taken a mouthful. Similarly, the Holy Quran does not mention any time length of, uh, to, the, uh, to, to this ordeal or how long Yunus peace be upon him stayed there. It could have been moments only, hours or days. Allah Almighty knows the truth. In all cases, what is important is the incident itself and the reaction of Yusuf, peace be upon him. At that difficult and extraordinary situation, his heart was moved by remembering Allah Almighty and he called out to Allah Almighty and turned to him in sincere glorification and repentance. He used a beautiful form of dhikr and glorification that was immortalized in the Holy Quran. Allah Almighty says, and mention the man of the whale when he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon him, and he called out within the darknesses, none has the right to be worshipped but you, O Allah. Glorified and exalted be you above all that evil they associate with you. Indeed, I have been one of the wrongdoers. So we pardoned him and saved him from distress, and thus do we save the believers. Surah Al-Anbiya. Now this supplication is very important for us in our daily lives. Allah Almighty is teaching us to use this supplication at times of distress and difficulties. In one narration, a man asked the Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, was this supplication special for Yunus, peace be upon him, or is it general for all believers? The Messenger, peace be upon him, explained that it is for all believers and said to him, didn't you hear what Allah Almighty says after it? And thus do we save the believers? The true faith and iman is a cause for being saved by Allah Almighty when you need it. Furthermore, this supplication of Yunus peace be upon him is important in relieving us from distress and tribulation. Once the messenger peace be upon him so say to his companions, عنهم, shall I not tell you of something that if someone of you is afflicted with distress or tribulation relating to this life, and he supplicate with it, except that he will be relieved from it. Then the messenger, peace be upon him, said, it is the supplication of the known, Yunus, peace be upon him. La ilaha illa anta subhanak, inni kuntu min al There is none worthy of worship except you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I have been among the transgressors. Moreover, this supplication of Yunus, peace be upon him, is also a guarantee to get response from Allah Almighty. The messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the supplication of the known Prophet Yunus, peace be upon him, when he supplicated while in the belly of the whale, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al There is none worthy of worship except you. Glory be to you. Indeed, I have been among the transgressors. The messenger, peace be upon him, said, So indeed, no Muslim supplicates with it for anything ever except that Allah Almighty responds to him. Now this special supplication is one of the outstanding benefits of the story of Yunus, peace be upon him. Every Muslim who is in distress or difficulties should know that Allah Almighty is the one who can relieve him 
and remove his difficulties. He should recognize Allah Almighty and believe in him, supplicate to him and return to him in sincere repentance and good deeds. And Allah Almighty will respond to him and forgive him, inshallah. Now the dhikr and glorification was a reason for saving Yunus, peace be upon him. But this was not an isolated time of glorification that Yunus, peace be upon him, performed. As Allah Almighty described Yunus, peace be upon him, as being among those who glorify Allah Almighty often before this incident. So his glorification of Allah Almighty inside the whale was a continuation of his glorification at all times throughout his life. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, and indeed, Jonah was among the messengers, mentioned when he ran away to the laden ship, and he drew lots and was among the losers. Then the whale swallowed him while he was blameworthy. And had he not been of those who exalted Allah Almighty, he would have remained inside its belly until the day that they are resurrected. Surah As-Safat. There is an important lesson for us in these verses. Our good deeds throughout our lives is a reason to get help and support from Allah Almighty when we need it. As the Messenger, peace be upon him, advised us and said, Recognize and acknowledge Allah Almighty in times of ease and prosperity, and He will remember you in times of adversity. The Messenger, peace be upon him, also said, Whoever wishes that Allah Almighty will respond to him during hardship and grief, then let him supplicate plentifully when at times of ease. There is another important lesson. Put all your trust in Allah Almighty and never lose hope in Him and in His help and support, no matter how dire or impossible the situation might be as that of Yunus, peace be upon him. Allah Almighty answered the call of Yunus, peace be upon him, and ordered the whale to eject him onto a remote and treeless shore. It is said that his body was inflamed and bruised and he was tired and ill, and Allah Almighty caused a vine to grow to cover and protect him. After the recovery of Yunus, peace be upon him, Allah Almighty sent him to the inhabitants of Nineveh. And this time around, they all believed in him and followed him. This is another important reminder from Allah Almighty that we should never give up on people or lose hope in them, no matter how lost they might be, no matter how bad they might look. There is goodness in all of us, and it is our duty to advise them and remind them again and again, hoping that God Almighty will uncover that goodness in them and bring it back to life and guide them to the straight path and bless them. This is the ultimate guidance and hope and optimism in Islam. And who knows, they could become better than all of us in the sight of Allah Almighty. Only Allah knows. Dear viewers, it's time now for a short break. If you have any questions, do send us on our email, understandingislam at DMI, or post your feedback on our Facebook page. Stay with us. Welcome back. There is an interesting incident where the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned Yunus, peace be upon him. After many years trying to call the people of Mecca to Islam, the Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, went to the nearby city called At-Taif, trying to invite its people to Islam. However, the reaction of the people were very harsh. They were very hostile. They impudently jeered at the Messenger Muhammad, وسلم, used abusive language, howled at him, and pelted him with stones till blood flew down both his legs. And they didn't desist their relentless attack until they had chased the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu away from the city. Now there we read and exhausted the Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, took refuge in one of the numerous orchids and rested against the wall of a vineyard. And he turned to Allah Almighty in a touching dua and supplication. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said, O oh Allah, to you alone I make complaint of my helplessness the lack of my resources, and my insignificance before my mankind. You are the most merciful of all those who are merciful. You are the Lord of the helpless and the weak, and you are my Lord. Into whose hands would you put me? Into the hands of a stranger who would frown at me, or into the hands of the enemy who has control over my affairs? But if you have no anger on me, there is nothing for me to worry about. However, your bliss is more extensive for me. 
I seek protection in the light of your countenance, which eliminates the darknesses and which controls all affair in this world as well as in the hereafter. May it never be that I should anchor your anger and that you should be wrathful to me, offering all gladding to you till you accept. And there is no power nor resource but yours alone. Now, after this touching supplication, two wealthy brothers from Mecca noticed the helpless situation of the Messenger of Muhammad, peace be upon him. They felt mercy for him. And they called their Christian servant named Addas. And they told him to take some grapes to the Messenger, peace be upon him. When he put it in front of the Messenger, peace be upon him, he picked some of it, saying, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And then he ate. Upon hearing that, Addas was surprised. And he said, these are words which people in this land do not use. The messenger, peace be upon him, asked him, And from which land are you? And what is your religion? Addas replied, I am a Christian by faith, and I am from the people of Nineveh. The messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to him, From the city of the righteous man, Yunus, son of Matta. Addas was surprised that a man in this area knows about Yunus, peace be upon him, while even in the city of Nainawa itself, only a handful of people know about Yunus, peace be upon him. So Addas asked the Messenger of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and how do you know about Yunus, son of Matta? The Messenger of Muhammad, peace be upon him, replied, that is my brother. He was a prophet and I am a prophet. Thereupon, Addas hurriedly kissed the head of the Messenger of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hand and feet of the prophet in Ayn. And in other incidents, people are good about which prophet was better than, than another. Now, the Messenger of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he heard the people discussing who is better than who, he became angry, till anger appeared on his face. And he said, do not give superiority to any prophet amongst the prophets of Allah Almighty. And then he said, and I do not say that there is anybody who is better than Yunus bin Matta, peace be upon him. In another narration, the Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, one should not say I am better than Yunus bin Matta, peace be upon him. And in another narration, the Messenger, peace be upon him, said, whoever says that I am better than Yunus bin Matta is a liar. It is a beautiful way how our beloved and great Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, in all humblenessness and nobility, is establishing equality between all prophets and messengers of Allah, peace be upon them all, as equal brothers in faith in front of their Lord Allah Almighty. This is an important lesson for us, and we should not seek to compare between scholars, but rather benefit from the good fruits of their knowledge and understandings. O oh Allah, send your peace and blessings upon the messenger Yunus, peace be upon him, and upon our messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him and upon all the prophets and messengers, peace be upon them all, upon all their companions, followers, and those who follow the right path. Amen. We pray to Allah Almighty to increase our knowledge and guide us and guide others through us and make us merciful and compassionate, moderate and balanced in our hearts and in our action and in all aspects of our lives and to grant us good things in this world and good things in the hereafter. Amen. We pray to Allah Almighty to guide us to His divine truth, make us good for ourselves, for our families, for our children, neighbors, and greater society, and then to all of humanity. Amen. Thank you for watching, and see you next week, inshallah. God willing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, and the mercy of Allah and His grace.